Hi, I'm Adam and I work on climate change. That sounds like some kind of confession, but what I mean by it is I have a doctorate in atmospheric physics from the University of Oxford, and I now work as a climate and science journalist and climate change YouTuber, obviously. Ultimately, you only need to understand four things about climate change, and that is that it's happening, it's serious, it's us, but there is hope. Okay, so that's it. Thanks a lot for watching. No, I'm just joking. I actually want you to understand where these four points come from, the key information behind them. So I want to take you on a complete journey from how we know what's happening is happening to what we can actually do about it. So without further ado, let's get started. Okay, now firstly, the climate is changing. The world is heating up and heating up fast. In fact, things have already warmed by about one degree Celsius since humans started industrializing the planet. And researchers can trace the world's prehistoric temperatures using the evidence they leave behind, like ice cores and tree rings. And these show us that the world is now hotter than it's been for thousands of years and is currently heating up about 20 times faster than after the last ice age. But maybe you're suspicious that the world isn't actually heating up. Perhaps you never trusted NASA ever since your ex left you for someone called Steve who wears a NASA t-shirt. I don't want to talk about it. But there are other organisations like the Japanese Meteorological Agency and the UK Met Office that have also looked at global temperatures, published their methods and found that yes, the world is seriously heating up. It's not just temperature that's changing by the way. Sea levels are rising, weather patterns are changing and heavy rainfall is becoming even more extreme. Oh. <sighs> But these changes can't just happen by themselves. Conservation of energy, one of the most fundamental principles of physics, means that something must be driving these temperature increases. But what on earth could it be? Well, to answer that, we have to understand why the Earth is so hot in the first place. Basic physics tells us that if the Earth didn't have an atmosphere, it would be about minus 18 degrees Celsius, which it obviously isn't. Luckily though, the Earth does have an atmosphere, and in 1824, Joseph Fourier suggested that the greenhouse effect keeps the world warm like a nice, cosy blanket. That's right, the greenhouse effect isn't new science. It's been around for nearly 200 years, which is almost as old as your dad. Sorry, that's a really cheap joke, and your dad's a great guy. I would hate for him to see this. Just come. More CO2 means more blankets, which means a hotter planet, which is exactly what engineer Guy Callender concluded in 1938. He also showed that atmospheric CO2 was increasing, a trend which has continued to this day. In fact, today, CO2 is higher in the atmosphere than it's been for millions of years. Millions of years? Yes, millions of years. But where's this extra CO2 coming from? Could burning billions of tonnes of carbon-containing fossil fuels and destroying carbon-containing land have anything to do with it? I mean, yes, obviously it could. Just to make sure though, researchers have checked the new carbon dioxide and confirmed that it has the makeup you'd expect for human sources. But maybe you're still sceptical. Maybe increasing the warming gas somehow isn't increasing the warming, and some mysterious other thing is, which would be odd, but okay, let's run with it. Well, it's not just fundamental physics that teaches us that CO2 is the culprit, it's also Earth's history. You see, the climate has changed before, and CO2 played a vital role in those changes. But they weren't caused by carbon dioxide, they were caused by things like volcanoes and changes in the sun's intensity. Could either of these things be driving the climate changes we're seeing today? No because we can check them and we can see that they're not doing anything which would explain what we're seeing in the climate. And there are other signs that CO2 must be the culprit too. The physics tells us that the warming you'd expect for a greenhouse gas is different to the warming from other causes. So for example, different parts of the world should heat faster than others, the upper atmosphere should cool as the lower atmosphere warms, and days should be heating slower than nights. But it's not just about heating up. We'd also expect a different pattern of radiation arriving at the Earth's surface, ocean acidification, and changes in rainfall. Oh my god, are you serious? Oh, 
But guess what? All these changes predicted by climate science have been seen in the Earth's climate. Okay, so the world's changing, but who cares, right? I mean, can't humans and the natural world adapt? Well, yeah, that would be great, but so would being adopted by Beyonce and Jay-Z, and apparently that's not happening anytime soon. The reality is that climate change is already driving up extreme weather events, from floods to droughts, and especially killer heat waves. In fact, some heat waves have already been made about a hundred times more lightly because of human emissions. Climate change also reduces food and water security. Thanks to all of this, climate change is forcing people from their homes and costing people their lives. Climate change hits the poorest, who have the least ability to adapt, the hardest. Between and within countries, climate change is driving up inequality. And there are already hints that it's causing local conflicts and even large-scale violence. Come on, just give me, just give it the natural world is changing too. We're seeing species go extinct, corals bleaching, ecosystems collapsing, and deserts expanding. Climate change isn't a standalone threat, it's a threat multiplier. It makes all the other issues we care about worse. Just take the coronavirus. Dealing with extreme weather events at the same time as dealing with a pandemic, it's just a disaster on top of a disaster. <coughs> Today the world has already warmed by about one degree Celsius, but if we burn all the fossil fuels that we can dig out the ground, we could be in for about eight degrees of warming. That's roughly double the warming that happened as the world came out of the last ice age. The world has agreed to limit global warming to two or ideally 1.5 degrees Celsius, but because carbon dioxide sticks around in the atmosphere for centuries, if we want to limit global warming, we have to get carbon dioxide emissions to zero. Zero. Ideally around the middle of the century. And right now, emissions are still rising instead of falling. <sighs> okay, so climate change is happening, it's us, and it's seriously serious. But there is also hope. We know what we need to do, stop emitting greenhouse gases. And we know how to do this by changing what powers our economies. When I started working on climate change, everyone was saying renewables are just too expensive. Seriously, I heard this a lot. Renewables are too expensive. It was weird. But today, renewables have become remarkably cheap. In fact, they're the cheapest option for many parts of the world. Cutting emissions from transport requires nothing much more complicated than buses and bicycles. And if we want to lower the impact of our diets, then we can just swap eating animals for eating plants. In responding to the coronavirus, we've seen that the world can take big, decisive action when it chooses to. But the coronavirus response has hit the poorest, hardest. We can choose to combat climate change in a way that builds a safer and fairer society. In fact, many politicians around the world are already calling for a green recovery as we rebuild from the pandemic. But the great thing is that stopping climate change doesn't stop at stopping climate change. Preventing the world from warming would also give us healthier diets, cleaner air, and help protect the natural world. But let's be real. Hope has to be earned. And if you want to, there's loads you can do to earn it. You can push for structural change by voting, writing to your elected officials, and taking to the streets when it's safe to do so. You can lower your personal impact by avoiding planes and cars, tweaking what you eat, and buying less stuff. Ooh, tempting, but no thank you, I already ate. Shifting attitudes is also vital. Just look at how all the protests in 2019 helped change the political conversation about climate change. You can help keep that going by talking to your friends and your families, and by sharing useful, reliable information, like witty YouTube videos. But look, this isn't everything we know about climate change, not even close. But I reckon it's a pretty good start. And if you think so too, make sure to like and share this video. And if you'd like to know more, then make sure you're subscribed. Plus, there are plenty of links in the description to this video so you can find out further information behind every single statement that I've made. But if you only remember four things from this video, remember that it's happening, it's us. 
it's serious, but we can stop it. Okay, until next time. Bye. Teaches us that 